Hi, my name is Dr. Ben Thompson with Treble Health. In this episode of the Tinnitus Relief Podcast, hear from Martin, who has an incredible success story with tinnitus. If you've ever been told by a doctor that there's nothing you can do for tinnitus, make sure to watch this whole video until the end because Martin shares his success story that gives the motivation and encouragement to the tinnitus community that we need so much. Give a thumbs up on this video if you like success stories for tinnitus and make sure to subscribe to Treble Health so that you get access to all of our tinnitus relief podcast episodes. Martin, thank you for volunteering your time with us today. You have a story to share about tinnitus, we're not going to tell all of it in this very moment. Let's start at the beginning. Actually about 10 years ago, and there was a firearm that went off pretty close to me. And uh, that was when, or how it happened. You know, for the first few days, definitely in the first few hours, it was a, a bit alarming. You know, I wasn't sure if it was ever gonna go away. I mean, I figured it was it was kind of like going to a concert or something and it'll just go away in a couple of days. And so I didn't, you know, try to not think of it too much, but it didn't go away. <laughs> And I did talk to a doctor and he said, oh yeah, you, 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 that's probably going to be with you forever. And it was pretty shocking to hear that. And thankfully it wasn't, um, it wasn't that high pitched of a noise. So it was very tolerable. It was okay. I just learned to live with it. Um, after about a week or so, it just, I just kind of tuned it out. And so it was pretty minimal, which was great. You know, it didn't, nothing ever really fluctuated. And so I didn't really have any issues with it until just this year and just a few months ago when, or at the beginning of this year, and when I got COVID <laughs> and uh, I don't know if it is directly related to COVID, I can't really prove that. But, you know, ever since I did, my ears have been doing some really strange things and like I said, I mean, the last 10 years, it was very constant and it never bothered me. I learned to live with it. Um, it wasn't too bothersome, but then one night just doing dishes, you know, my ears just all of a sudden just went <laughs> and just went, I mean, I don't know, probably maybe 50 times the volume. I mean, it was extremely loud and it uh, got to a point where it was just, it was difficult to do day-to-day -day tasks, uh, just to think normally, uh, to work, you know, especially being in quiet spaces was extremely difficult. Sleeping, I mean, you name it, it, it messed my life up. <laughs> I didn't know where to go or what was happening. Um, I, at the time, I didn't relate it to COVID at all. I just thought it was bad luck, you know, and like, oh my gosh, this is, something's happening here. Um, you know, the ringing in my ears is, is just decided to, decided to go bonkers, you know? <laughs> so what, what did you, what did you do? Um, where did you first go looking for help? Dr. Google, uh, local uh, doctors, ENT doctors, where did you go? Uh, first step was ENT doctor. Yeah. And yeah, I, I didn't go to Dr. Google, uh, <laughs> for a little while, but yeah. So where I was living, we have a good, I guess a, a good hospital over there. And so I decided to go there first. And being that it was it was during COVID, um, the, apparently they were going through some pretty major staffing issues, uh, yet they did, they did see me and I did do an ear test and um, you know, I could hear just fine. And they said everything was fine. You can hear just fine, but uh, we're going to give you a call in a few days or so. And, you know, the audiologist wants to talk to you. So I said, okay, a few days passed, no call. I was waiting anxiously because this was, it was just affecting my day-to-day -day living. Um, and so I called them and anyways, we went back and forth for a little bit. Uh, apparently their audiologist quit um, before I even did the hear te hearing test. And so that kind of frustrated me. I ended up, I'm originally from Houston and uh, there's a good, you know, the Texas Medical Center is down there. So I decided to kind of seek out a known professional and I said, okay, well, 
me kill two birds with one stone, go visit some family and seek out another audiologist and see if I can see if I can find one. First of all, I, I don't know. I just, I just know that Houston has a lot of doctors. So um, I did find one. She was, you know, pretty, pretty expensive. Uh, she had very high credentials. She had much, much better equipment than the one that I previously went to. And uh, so as far as equipment wise and the types of tests and um, treatment she was talking about were by far, it was, you know, all new to me. So they, the other place did not say anything in those regards at all. Um, yeah. So you're, you're in this position where, you know, you need help. It's affecting your day-to-day -day functioning. You said sleep, work, concentration. I'm sure that it brought up a lot of anxiety, like you had mentioned of waiting for, you know, clarity on what is my path forward here. And then you're having to just find a doctor, find a specialist who can work with you. Um, during this whole time, though, you're, you're still struggling, as you mentioned. So what happens next there? You, you speak to someone who seems a little more knowledgeable. And then what happened next? Yeah, uh, so they gave me a couple tests and um, didn't do so well on those ones. And you know, the next step was extremely expensive treatment. And that was basically a, a tinnitus masker. And, and that was basically it. And I, I thought there had to be another solution. So that's when I started going to Dr. Google. <laughs> um, and I found you and uh, I believe it was on, on YouTube and started looking at some of the stories kind of like this one. So hopefully this helps out, help some people out. And, um, but yeah, so I, I was doing a lot more research and, you know, at this point, yeah, it was driving me crazy. It, I mean, it was mentally not good, mentally challenging and affecting work, affecting a lot of things and also depressing. It was, it was, it was too much. <laughs> so I needed, I needed something and found you guys. And, um, yeah, that's when I gave you a call and it, um, I'm glad I did. So everything has worked out. You know, I, I started talking with, uh, with one of your audiologists there and, uh, we created a strategy that was, you know, has helped other people in the past. I also jumped onto a, um, group session and it was really good to hear what other people were you know, what they were feeling and what they were, uh, you know, trying to, to do to help relieve the situation. And so I got some more helpful tips that, you know, I didn't even know of or think of because this is all new to me. And so I started doing those practices and staying on plan with what the, uh, what your audiologist had set for me. And yeah, I mean, my goal honestly was, I know it's, it may never go away, but my goal was just to get it back down to where it was. And I mean, it was, it was very bad. It was extremely loud. And then sometimes it would even peak and it would fluctuate. It would get even louder uh, to a point where if I was walking, I would just, I would have to it would stop me dead in my tracks and I just have to breathe and just hope and pray that it goes back down to, to the new, the new norm. <laughs> and which it did thankfully after about maybe a minute, 30 seconds to a minute of, of peaking or spiking. And, but yeah, I mean, with you guys' help, um, I was really able to put a plan in motion it was not as expensive as the other audiologists that I saw. I feel that, you know, the teams that you have in place, the people that you have in place are, are also more there versus the other, you know, few audiologists that I saw. Um, so it's good to, to have someone there that you can kind of rely on. And if you're having a, a bad day, you can at, at least reach out and just at least let someone know, you know, but, uh, but anyhow, with, the, with all of that being said, um, yeah, it's, it all worked out and my tennis level thankfully is back to where, where it once was. So tell us more about that. First of all, congratulations. And I know it takes a lot of work on your end to put the pieces together. Tell us more about how much your tinnitus improved during the treatment and also explain what were you doing? 
Were you using sound therapy? Were you using something else? Tell us about the results you experienced and how you did it. Definitely. So I was reluctant, you know, I'm just being honest, I was definitely reluctant. And because I was just reading so many articles, so many things like, no, this, it's never going to go down. You're stuck with it. Uh, there's no treatment for it. It's too new of, of an issue. Um, people are really starting to have more issues with it ever since COVID. So I did realize that that is kind of a you know, uh, something that's happening. Um, and, uh, so yeah, uh, but I, I decided to, to go forward, do it. And I was, so I, I received the tinnitus maskers, which really helped out a lot. And I was also listening to some white noise before going to bed, uh, that really helped me put myself to sleep. And another thing that I, I just kind of did on my own, which I thought was good, uh, was acupuncture. Uh, I did find somebody to do acupuncture and he actually put needles around my ears, which uh, I wasn't sure if it was going to help or not. If anything, it was, it was relaxing. I don't know if it helped. Um, so just relaxing, breathing, being more conscious, aware of your surroundings, taking the time to relax and just, you know, just just take some breaths, you know, as, as, uh, frustrating as this can be, um, you know, just the mind, I guess, just works in mysterious ways. So just kind of calming it down, having the tinnitus maskers, uh, relying on you guys for guidance, knowing that I'm not alone and being able to talk to others really helped out a lot. Yeah. I'm happy to hear that. And Tell us again, what current levels of tinnitus do you experience? Let's, let's use first a, a one to 10 scale of one being very soft, 10 being very loud. On average, what are your levels right now in the last two weeks? Right now in the last two weeks, um, it has not fluctuated, thankfully, um, in, a, in a few months. And so I would have to give it, you know, like I said, it's, it's definitely not 100% gone. So I'd say probably about a three. Okay. And where was it? during the most challenging times here in the past year when you were really struggling with this? It was unbearable. <laughs> so uh, yeah, um, not going to beat around the bush about that. It was, it, it was, it was not good. So I would say, yeah, I mean, I guess it could always get worse. So I would hate to give it a 10. So probably a, a nine, yeah. eight or nine. I mean, it was, it was up there. Yeah. Well, you, mentioned a really important point that when you were researching online or maybe even talking to certain people, uh, even certain doctors, they might say things like, Hey, you just have to get used to the sound. There's no cure for it. But if you knew what you knew now, you would say, okay, when I said I wanted a cure, I just meant I wanted it to get a lot better. I didn't necessarily need it to go to zero. And your case showed, Hey, if this can go from a nine down to a three, that's enough to you know, allow you to work and to focus and, and have a normal life again. Whereas even though it's not completely silent, and even though you probably still wish it was a bit better, it's at such a level better than where it was when you were really struggling more severely, that this is the kind of message that we want to share to the community and to doctors. Do you have any comments on that? Yeah, 100%. I mean, I think you hit the nail on the head. So yeah, there is definitely, I've had conversations with doctors. I've had conversations with just, you know, people who aren't doctors and it, yeah, they have said to me basically like learn to live with it. Um, it's not going away. And that's when my anxiety really spiked through the roof too, because then you start you start going to Dr. Google <laughs> and you can go down a pretty deep rabbit hole of what other people have done because of tinnitus and it's not good. <laughs> and so I would say stay away from those articles and it can get better. Uh, so to the, to the naysayers out there, it can definitely get better. Uh, may not ever go away, but uh, it can definitely get better. Excellent. I really appreciate you sharing your time, Martin. Looking forward, what are your goals? What are your goals moving forward? And maybe that's, hey, I'm every time I go to a loud concert, I'm going to bring earplugs. Maybe that is, hey, I'm going to still stick with my sound therapy regimen and my tinnitus maskers because I want to see how much lower the tinnitus baseline level can get or other things that are maybe just about your overall health. Uh, what are your goals here moving forward as you're now in this sort of maintenance stage of 
of dealing with tinnitus? Yeah, definitely. It's a great question. So I do uh, still utilize my tinnitus maskers. It's not, it's not every day like I used to. It's every once in a while. Um, like you said, I mean, I, I'm kind of curious how far down I can get it. And not only that, it's not just curiosity. It's just, I, sometimes I have to, you know, um, and, but it, again, it's nowhere near where it was. And I definitely sleep still. I, I like having the, the white noise, or I think technically it's the pink noise. <laughs> um, whenever I go to sleep, I still do that every single night. Uh, it just helps me go to sleep. Um, going to concerts, I did go to a concert for the first time a few weeks ago, and I will admit my tinnitus spiked tremendously. And it took about four days or so for it to get back to normal. So I did use my tinnitus maskers again. I was, I got nervous again, you know, I was a bit anxious and was hopeful that it would um, go back down. Thankfully it did. So I would definitely be cautious about going to loud events and I, I love music. I, I love it. Love going to concerts. So yeah, just having those earplugs, even in your pocket, if you don't want to use them, at least take them with you you know, I'm definitely going to start doing that um, and uh, utilizing those in the future. Excellent. Well, for anyone listening, you can find our team of audiologists at Treble Health or treblehealth.com. Martin, thank you so much for sharing your time, your wisdom, and your experience with this. We hope that at least one person who's watching can get helpful information from this video. So if you've watched this and this was helpful, please comment below helpful, Martin. We're cheering you on and rooting for you moving forward. Thanks again. Yeah, thank you, Dr. Penn. I, I really appreciate everything that you and your team has done for me. And uh, yeah, let everybody know that I'm not paid to be doing this. <laughs> so uh, yeah, I just want to help other people out there. Hopefully, you know, if you're struggling with it, um, you know, Dr. Ben and your team have done a very great job and uh, are all very honest and down to earth and have, um, have helped me a lot. Thank you so Thank much, you. Martin. Yeah, you have a great one. Take care. Thank you for watching today's video with Treble Health. Check out our next video by clicking the button on this screen or another recommended video. And if you're not already, make sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel. Thanks so much. See you on the next video.